Okay, so ESPN's Ryan Clark recently chimed in on the whole Draymond Green situation where the Golden State Warriors forward got into another altercation after he struck the face of Yusuf Nurkic. This is Draymond's sixth career suspension and the second for the 2023 season. The last one came when he grabbed Rudy Gobert in a chokehold and was suspended for five games and this most recent one has landed him an indefinite suspension. Anyways, a lot of people have chimed in on the situation with the likes of Stephen A. Smith, Kevin Durant and Draymond Green's agent Rich Paul and the general consensus from that group is that Draymond needs help. There is no absolving Draymond Green from these transgressions. He's clearly lost control he clearly has things in his life going on that is bothering him. We don't know what the, what it is. And quite frankly, even if we did, I wouldn't tell you. I love Draymond Green. I know him from a media perspective. I know him better than most. The icing on the cake, albeit not intentionally. I'm not accusing Kevin Durant of doing anything wrong here. He did nothing wrong. He simply answered, answered a question from his heart to the media. He said he was happy that Nurkic was okay. He said that Draymond Green wasn't like this when I was his teammate. When they went to three straight finals together and they won back-to-back -back titles together. He said, that ain't the Draymond Green I know. I'm paraphrasing. And he said, quote, I hope that ultimately he gets the help he needs. This is the stuff that's being tossed around about Draymond Green, that this is some sort of mental issue. But I want you to hear Ryan Clark's take on this incident. And if I'm going to be honest, I got to wholeheartedly agree on his take. Have a listen. We've always known that he had an edge. Like, he had an edge. I love him. I love Draymond. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, like, to Freddie's point, like, now it is a, you're a habitual line stepper. Why have he got to this point in his career is my they, thing. They, they say that uh, Rich Paul... Mike Dunleavy, the general manager, and Draymond are all meeting to figure out some form of counseling. I don't think he needs counseling. I just think he has poor competitive impulse control. It would be one thing to me if Draymond Green was brandishing guns on video. If Draymond Green was getting calls for domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. If Draymond Green was facing accusations of being a deadbeat dad and not taking care of his kids. Draymond Green doesn't have that. Draymond Green ain't fighting at restaurants, Correct. right? Draymond Green isn't some menace to society. Draymond Green does stupid things when he steps on the hardwood or in between the lines or in gyms when it comes to controlling himself as it pertains to his profession. You don't need counseling for that. You need to be a freaking adult and you need to be a professional, mm -hmm. period. It's not about apologizing to people for your actions. And we gotta think, Draymond didn't get suspended. Okay, so if Draymond's first suspension was in 2016. Mm -hmm. Then his, ne his next suspension or one of the next two was because he got too many technicals, right? So when we start to, to see this pattern of Draymond becoming an issue is you knock out Jordan Poole. You also have the Sabonis incident where you step on Sabonis, the Rudy Gobert incident where you choke him during the fight. And now this, and honestly, this one is the stupidest one. This one is 100% to me. What Draymond Green did to Nurkic is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And it's stupid because this is one of the more cowardly things Draymond Green has done, right? Like the Jordan Poole thing is definitely over the line. It was definitely too much. It was definitely too aggressive. It was definitely unprofessional. But these are two men standing in front of each other talking crap and you swung on it. Do I think it's wrong? Absolutely. But that I understand. But it's cowardly because one, he wasn't pushing you. Two, you're behaving as if you didn't mean to do it. Now, did you mean to land one on his jaw? Maybe not. But the action of turning around, swinging your fist, you meant to hit him. And you meant to hit him in a way that could be considered accidental and hoping that because it's considered accidental, it wouldn't be flagrant, right? When, you're, when that's not intelligent because your resume and your career and your history is automatically gonna lead people to think that you did it intentionally, so why do it? And that's why I say it comes to decision-making and impulse control in between the lines. Okay, so let's unpack what Ryan Clark had to say here. I think he brings up an interesting point. 
all the issues surrounding Draymond is on the court. You never hear his name off the court in a negative light. So I think Ryan is 100% correct when he spoke out against the narrative that Green needs counseling for his competitive impulse control. He does not sound like someone who is a troubled individual, but more so just a fiery competitive character. If you've played sports, you've likely encountered someone like Draymond Green where they're just playing with that extra chippy and feistiness, the guy who'll give you that extra shove when running or chasing for a ball. On top of that, Ryan Clark also emphasized the need to differentiate Draymond's poor competitive impulse control and more severe off-court problems like criminal activity. But like I said, Draymond has been a professional off the court and his life outside of basketball is pretty much non-existent in the public eye. It's more like he's selectively controlling his emotions off the court and just letting it all out on his opponents. He's not like John Moran or some other athlete who can't control his emotions at all times. Anyways, I'm sure some of you will probably disagree and say that therapy isn't only to treat criminal activity or domestic violence, but what I think Ryan Clark is getting at is that he's saying that Draymond Green is just a dirty player. Basically, Draymond is playing 80s or 90s basketball in the 2020s. He's just in the wrong era. Think about all those other players from 30 years ago like Charles Barkley, Charles Oakley and others. We never said they needed therapy for what they did on the court. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like this whole notion that he needs counseling is a little off the mark. Anyways, let me know what you think about Ryan Clark's comments. Do you agree or disagree with his take?